Okay, so let's finish up chapter 50. A um, couple of things about muscles. They're, they're broken into two groups, fast twitch and slow twitch muscles. The, um, this has to do with um, um, the, the, the strength at which um, contractions occur and um, so and the, the, the time that a contraction can be held. The fast twitch muscles are ones that allow for brief contractions, powerful contractions. Um, the slow twitch fibers, those are ones that can sustain very long contractions and, and so for example are ones that allow you to sort of remain upright, remain your, in, in your particular posture. Um, they're ones that perhaps will cramp up if you're standing in one position for too long. Um, okay, now, last section, skeletal systems. So, um, whether you have an internal skeleton like us or an external skeleton like an insect, you're going to have muscles attached to that skeleton that allows you to move joints. And when you bend a joint, this is what's known as flexing it, and when you straighten out a joint, this is what's known as extension. And within that joint, you have muscles that work in opposition. You'll have a muscle that flexes the joint, so your elbow is flexed by the biceps, and muscle that extends the joint, and that's known as the, the tricep in our, again, at our um, elbow joint. So you have flexors and extenders, and they work in opposition to each other at joints. <coughs> now, some organisms don't have a skeleton at all, uh, or an internal or external skeleton, but they maintain their body shape by what's known as a hydrostatic skeleton. That is, they have a flexible, soft body, but they have pressure uh, inside of them from the body fluids they have, and they do have they have muscles in that soft part of your body that of their body that surrounds that liquid and they can flex or they can contract or relax those muscles and so here in the middle this earthworm is contracting those muscles which causes a narrowing of that portion and squeezes the liquid out to the side and they can use this um, wave of these contractions to move the organism along um, through space. Some organisms have an exoskeleton like insects and other arthropods, this crab here. But we, uh, mammals and birds and reptiles, amphibians, all have an endoskeleton, an internal skeleton. And so here you can see some of the major bones of um, the endoskeleton, and these are bones that you would have had to remember in biology freshman year. Um, with this, I wouldn't worry about memorizing particular bones. Um, I would remember these, though, the types of joints that we have. You recall ball and socket joints, ones that, like your, your arm or your, your hip, where you can move that limb in basically a rotational pattern. Um, you have hinge joints, like your elbow, where you move the joint in a single plane, or the, the joints in your finger. You have pivot joints. Um, you remember in your lower arm you have what's called the radius and the ulna. And the radius essentially hooks up to your humerus and it can rotate on the humerus. And that's what allows you to rotate your lower arm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you also have some others you may recall in your skull. For example, you have what are called fixed joints. There's different bones in your skull, but they're fixed in place after you age a while, and they don't they don't move at all. And in your hand, you have what are called glide joints, and so the the carpals in your hand, those bones can sort of glide past each other, which makes your palm somewhat flexible. <coughs> So again, you can have fixed joints as well. Um, okay, well, that's it, finally, for Chapter 50. Lots of information. Um, 
mostly on the nervous system and sensory systems.